we are going to go live into Facebook also. Share my screen. There we go. Going live on all aspects. All right. Yay. All right, Michelle, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time and all of you guys that are watching, whether on Facebook or Instagram, I want you, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Michelle Jacobs. She is a therapeutic coach, speaker, and author, and she is the incredible founder of Rewiring Minds. I don't know where to look because I've got two cameras going, but, um, so she is a mindfulness practitioner, and she is also a life coach specializing in neuro-linguistic programming, and she also is really well-versed in emotional freedom technique, also known as tapping, uh, and is a certified heart math practitioner. Now, Michelle, I know you and I have been talking for a little while now, trying to get you on the Body Project podcast, but I thought that this is a really important time to have a conversation, and I wanted to start off the conversation with you in particular because I had an amazing session with you a couple of weeks back, and um, I thought that we could share some really amazing tools that can make a big difference for people now, right? In the middle of the pandemic, people's anxiety is super, super high, and people don't know how to manage themselves, right? And my hope is that you can give them some really important tools that can take them from that overwhelm, anxiety state to a more positive, gratitude, compassionate state for themselves and for others. Uh, and so, you know, tell us a little bit about the heart math portion and what people need to know about that. Well, I just wanted to say thank you, Catherine, for inviting me to this. Um, so with the HeartMath, what they have realized, so HeartMath is a nonprofit organization. I do hear myself equate quite a bit. I know, I do too. Oh. But so basically with HeartMath, oh, you hear that, right? Yeah, we might have to get off um, Instagram because I think that's the thing. Yeah, let's end Instagram. So everybody, I will post this, uh, the link to, you can join us on Facebook if you are watching on Instagram. So Catherine Tanaka Fitness on Instagram, because we're going to end this, because I don't know how to not echo. <laughs> so we'll keep it on here, yeah? Yeah, and do you want me to post the Instagram? Okay. Yeah. Oh. That's better, right? Much better. I don't hear any echo right now. All right, so we're talking about HeartMath. So going back to HeartMath, so HeartMath is a nonprofit organization, right? And they do a lot of research around the heart, the intuition of the heart, how to improve our performance using the intelligence of the heart. But what they also found is that when we experience negative states or negative emotions, so let's say we experience anxiety, we experience depression, irritation, something as small as irritation, frustration, what tends to happen is that our body perceives something as a threat, right? So we go into this fight, flight, or freeze response. And as soon as we go into that, something called the cortisol, which is a stress hormone, increases. Now, why am I talking about that? I find that, unfortunately, with with what's happening with the coronavirus. There's a lot of stress, Let's, there's a lot of uncertainty, and uncertainty usually brings a lot of anxiety with it, a lot of fear. But what it tends to do is put us in a fight, flight, free state. So our cortisol levels are increasing, and what that means for us is that it suppresses our immune system. So what I like to advocate at this time is for all of us to take care of our own immune system, do the things we can do, right? The things we can control. So I do have some heart math techniques I can share or take everyone through a heart-based meditation where we can use our heart, transform our feelings of anxiety, feelings of fear, transform it into states of gratitude, into states of love, because in those states, we're kicking in our parasympathetic or our restorative system, which is just the opposite of the fight and flight. And you need that system because that boosts your immune system. 100%. So that's everything in a nutshell. Yeah, 100%. Actually, in the beginning of this episode, I speak specifically around about how it is so important at this time, especially, you know, 
regular life is stressful, right? right? Managing our kids and work and our boss and whatever else, right? And you know, from a fitness and health perspective, I'm always encouraging my clients and giving them the tools to downregulate those stress hormones, right? Because cortisol from a physiological standpoint really doesn't allow you to get rid of extra body fat, for example, that you're holding on to. But at this time when, you know, collectively as a globe, we are all energetically in this fight or flight state, I think that tools like this are more important than ever, right? It's not about the way that we look. It's really about how can we present, prevent disease in our systems. So before we get into a little bit of the meditation from a heart math perspective, and for those of you that are um, Joe Dispenza fans, Dr. Joe Dispenza, if you've ever watched What the Bleep or follow what he's doing now, um, you know that they employ the studies out of the HeartMath Institute that actually look at the brain-heart coherence, right? Of how you can basically, like your business is called, rewire the way that your body reacts to things and that you can control that system of your mind with your emotional regulation in your system and therefore alter physiologically the way that your body responds to your external world, right? I got it kind of right. Um, but I would also love your perspective on emotional freedom technique, because at this time when our systems are so heightened, right, that we need day-to-day -day kind of stressors of like, how do we deal with our kids that they're driving us crazy? So I would love for you to share that little bit of tool and maybe start with what is EFT or tapping and why is this a powerful tool that people can start using now? So EFT is Speak a little louder for me, Michelle. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Okay, sounds How about good. Now? That's better. Okay, perfect. So as I was saying, EFT, also known as emotional freedom technique, basically it's very simple to do. You're just using your meridians. So think of acu acupressure or acupuncture. So in EFT, you're using acupressure. So you're tapping your meridians and you're tapping and instead of suppressing how you're feeling, because oftentimes that's what we tend to do, right? We, we have this thought, we are scared, but we're like, oh, I shouldn't be scared. So you're just suppressing it. But the problem with that is it's still there. It's lingering. It's in your subconscious mind eating away, right? So what EFT tends to do is we tap and we bring all those subconscious thoughts out into your consciousness. Mm -hmm. So then you can transform it. And it's very simple technique. You're just tapping on your meridians and you're saying exactly how you feel. So let's say around this point, you're feeling a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, right? So the first step often is to just have something called an acceptance statement. So Catherine just asked, did you want me to go through the steps of EFT with your folks? Yeah, if, if you can, if you can even demonstrate something like, to remind people to remind themselves that they're safe, that they're okay, or to over when they're feeling overwhelmed. Absolutely. Sure. So EFT, there are certain points you need to tap, right? So your first point is what I call the karate chop point. So that's just, you know, three words to chop. <laughs> so the side of your wrist. And you're just getting a few of your fingers. So take four of the fingers and just tap. And that's all you're doing. So you're just tapping away and the first statement is usually your acceptance statement so let's say you're experiencing a lot of we'll go with anxiety because that's what seems like the world's quite anxious right now yes. right so let's go with anxiety so and i would uh i would actually encourage your viewers to join us at yes, this point no, we're just going to tap and we're going to say even though i feel all this anxiety even though i, I feel still, all this anxiety yet i still love and accept myself and we're going to say it two more times. Even though I feel this anxiety, I still love and accept myself. And you can repeat if you want. It's up to you. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. So that's your starting point. You, whatever you're feeling, you want to note that. You want to say you're feeling. And you want to accept yourself for feeling that. The second point is right where your eyebrow begins. So I probably have to take my glasses off for this one. So right there, so use two of your fingers and you can tap right where your eyebrows begin. And you're just saying this anxiety, 
And one of the things I do recommend people do is before you even start tapping, rate yourself. Where's your anxiety on a scale from one to 10? 10 being extremely anxious and one being not anxious at all. You're quite calm. So see where your rating is. So you're just tapping and saying this anxiety. This anxiety, side of the eyebrow. So that's this point right here. This anxiety, this feeling of uncertainty. And you're just taking, going right underneath. So follow the bone, the occipital bone, go under your eye and you're just tapping. This anxiety, this anxiety. Now going under your nose, that's your other point. You're just tapping this anxiety, this feeling of being overwhelmed under the mouth and you can see what you're feeling at this point if it's overwhelmed you can say i'm feeling so overwhelmed and the next point is you see where your collarbone is so two centimeters out so usually i encourage people to do this so you get your points there you go i'm feeling so overwhelmed not really sure what's happening and oftentimes at this point, there's a lot of uncertainty around, hey, are there going to be food resources available in the future, right? Or where's money going to come from? What's going to happen to my work? Right. So whatever it is that's bothering you, you can start talking about it at this point. So if it's, oh, I don't know how much I need to stock up. It's a lot of fear in the media. Mm. And it's scaring me. So whatever it is. Those negative statements that the critique that's inside your head, bring it out at this point. The other point is about 10 centimeters. Very good. So with the women, it's where the bra strap goes. So right there. And you're just tapping this anxiety, this feeling of being overwhelmed. And you tap about seven, seven to nine taps. The last point, go all the way up on top of the head, this anxiety this anxiety. Now you want to stop, take a deep breath in. But as you breathe out, just imagine you're letting go of all that anxiety. But that's just one round. And what I encourage is after the one round, you want to see where your anxiety is. Has it decreased a little bit? Has it come down or is it still at eight? So what you want to do is again, start to do the same process, do a second round and keep going till the levels of anxiety goes to zero. And sometimes other things might come up. So you might not even realize that you're associating the fear around this to something in your past. So then start talking about that. It could be, oh my God, like I had to share, I don't know, my food with my brother. I'm just making this up. I have no yeah. siblings. <laughs> so, and I felt like I didn't get enough, right? You never know what's lingering beneath. So start tapping on that. And after you do a few rounds, you can just start tapping and we'll just do that right now. Um, the second, well, in your case is do about two to three rounds. And in your fourth round, you can start to say, even though my anxiety is not completely gone, I still love and accept myself fully. So say that two more times. Even though my anxiety is still lingering, I still love and accept myself. Even though I still have the anxiety, I still love and accept myself. And you start tapping. I wonder if I can let go of this anxiety. Side of the eyebrow. I wonder how my body would feel if I just let it go. I wonder if I can allow calmness to come into my body. Allowing my anxiety to just disappear, to melt away. My anxiety is just melting away. I feel calmness entering my body. Feeling calm. Underarms, feeling calm. Top of the head, feeling calm all over. You want to stop, take a deep breath in. 
Thank you, Michelle. You're very welcome, Catherine. So I think that this is a really powerful tool that people can use and, and Michelle will be po reposting this on her social media channels. And I just want people to know that you are available, even though we're all practicing social distancing, you are available to do sessions online, right? Yeah, I am. And I know for me, we sat down over two weeks ago now, I feel, and it was a powerful session to be able to really get into that heart coherence, to really understand the power of emotional freedom technique. And for all of you that are kind of watching and be like, oh, this might be a woo-woo, there is evidence-based research, there is science backing these meridian points that Eastern medicine has used for thousands of years, right? Um, and so it is a powerful tool that you can access. You know, I would love to know, I mean, you have so many amazing designations, Michelle, but I would love to know what you want somebody to take into our conversation today. So what I usually at this point, I'm, what I'm advocating is, I know the uncertainty is there and I know the fear is there. But let's focus on what we can control versus what we cannot, because all that fear and uncertainty is over the things we cannot control. And our own inner state is something we can control. And a lot, tons and tons of research about that immune system correlation with that stress, right? So you can control your, manage your immune system, right? So my takeaway would be use tools to, such as EFT, heart band meditation, or just meditation. Mm. Get your in a state, in states of happiness, gratitude, love, kindness, compassion. So that would be my message for everyone, okay. to just changing our inner state. Thank you. And did you want to take us through maybe a quick five minute heart sure. math meditation? I would love to, yeah. Amazing. All right. So I'm just going to encourage everyone to sit up nice and tall. So I just want to make sure our audio is okay. Every time you move, it, it kind of cuts out on me. Oh, is that right? There you go. That's yeah. better. Can you, hear me? Can you hear me now? All right. Perfect. All right. I'm just going to encourage everyone to sit up nice and tall across your legs and across your hands. And just close your eyes and focus on your breath. All you're doing is observing the way you're breathing. You're not trying to change anything. Just observe. Notice your inhale. Notice your exhale. Notice where you feel your inhales. Do you feel it in the area of your nose? Your heart or your chest area? Do you feel it in your stomach? Just notice the cold air going in through the nose and the warm air leaving your nose. Oftentimes, when we are stressed, we carry our stress in our body. So we're just going to do a quick body scan. And all you're doing is noticing areas that feel tight and areas that feel relaxed. Remember, this isn't about judging. So there is no right, there is no wrong. You're just observing observing with kindness. So starting at your skull, just notice, notice the muscles in the area of your skull. Notice if the skull muscles feel tight or if they feel relaxed. Notice the muscles around your eyes. Notice the muscles in the area of your jaw. You can even notice, are you clenching your jaw? Or is it nice and relaxed? Notice the muscles in the area of your neck. Notice 
Once again, you're just noticing. Notice if they feel tight or if it feels relaxed. Bring your attention to the area of your throat and notice how those muscles feel. Moving down to your shoulders. Oftentimes we carry a lot of stress in our shoulders. Just observe, just observe where you carry your stress. Do you feel more tightness in the right side or on the left side? You're just observing, there's no judgment. How about the area of your heart or your chest? Just notice how your heart feels. Does it feel constricted? Does it feel closed off? Does it feel open? Notice your upper back, your mid back, your lower back. Notice your stomach, your hips. your glutes, your thighs, your knee, calves, shin, ankles, feet. Just notice your entire body breathing. See if you can bring your attention to the area of your heart again. And imagine your breath moving in through the area of your heart, into your stomach, down to your feet. And as you breathe out, imagine this breath coming out through the area of your heart. Breathing in through the heart and breathing out through the heart. See if we can add a rhythm to this breathing. Let's breathe in for five and breathe out for five. Breathing in two, three, four, five. Breathing out two, three, four, five. Breathing in, two, three, four, five. Breathing out, two, three, four, five. Now continue breathing this way for two more breaths. Now see if you can bring to mind a memory you hold dearly. It could be a place you've been to that was beautiful. Or it could be someone you love unconditionally. See if you can sincerely feel, feel the feelings of gratitude towards that person, that place. And just feel it. Feel it in the area of your heart. See if you can feel the feelings of love, compassion, appreciation, joy, kindness, peace, calm. See if you can radiate those feelings towards yourself. Imagine radiating love calmness, appreciation for yourself and towards yourself. 
And you may even say to yourself, may I be healthy. May I be at peace. Now see if we can radiate those feelings out into this world during this time of chaos. Let's spread the love. Imagine yourself radiating love, radiating peace, radiating compassion. Radiating the light that's within you. And you could say to yourself, may you all be healthy. May you all be at peace. Now bring your attention back to your breath. Back to the sounds in your room. Outside your room. You may start to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. And whenever you're ready, you may open your eyes. Thank you. So <clears throat> I propose that... You just froze, froze there, Catherine, so I didn't hear any of that. Oh, really? Okay. So I propose that you post a five-minute guided meditation that everyone can do every day. For sure. That was incredible. So sure. I will put all the details below in the comments. If you're watching this on Facebook, I will post all the details below, whether you're seeing this on Instagram or on the podcast page or in the podcast show notes so that you can access Michelle. You can follow her on social media. So you can, if you want to replay this meditation over and over again, or if you follow her along on social media, she offers a wealth of wisdom every single day. So I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us and sharing with us all the things people can do starting now to overcome the anxiety they're feeling. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's see if we can stop this live. All right. Thank you, my friend.